welcome back. Uh, today's video is uh, putting a uh, central dot on the my telescope mirror. Uh, the dot is essential for aligning the mirror in the telescope. You want a single column of light coming in the telescope, reflecting off the mirror and going straight back to the secondary and out through the uh, to the eyepiece. It's a uh, process called columnization. Um, you can see that I have moved into my basement from the last video uh, that you probably watched. If you haven't, give it a, give it a watch on uh, stripping the mirror and uh, having it uh, re-illuminized. Re uh, it's now November and it's snowing out and it's about 28 degrees, so I moved into my basement. So let's get started here. Let's get the exact diameter of the mirror so that I can get a radius for the center. So the I'm using this big long uh, it's a really a meter stick but it's the most accurate measuring device I have and I'm measuring the diameter across the back of the mirror so I don't touch the front side which has the coating on it. So I can either measure in inches, this is supposed to be a 10.1 inch diameter or well it is yeah it is uh, in inches so um, what I can do in, instead of going to the end yeah it looks pretty pretty close I can I'll flip this over so that it's you can see it well I'm going to the 20 inch mark here and going across. So that is, from what I can tell, it is 20, plus, uh, 20 or 30 minus 20 is 10 plus 1 eighth. Um, yeah, that's 10.1. So uh, 10 and 1 eighth. So half of that is 5 and 1 sixteenth correct? Okay. As I'm going to transfer that over to a piece of cardboard. Just I just cut it off of a shipping box uh, and then I'm going to cut out a circle. So I purchased this. This is called a beam compass. A normal compass to make a circle uh, is like with two forks and it's the probably the biggest you can get is six inch, maybe uh, maybe larger, but this is what's called a beam compass. Um, it uh, giant circle beam compass. I purchased it at um, Home Depot. It was a special order for about ten bucks, so it was a, an investment. So what we need to do is transfer okay 25 and 1 8 all right a little bit less okay all right 25 and 1 8 just to double check, 30 and, or 25 and 1 16th, and that goes to 30 and 1 8th. So that should be the diameter. If I draw a circle, let's make sure I can make it from both side to side. Yeah. All right, so right about there. I'm just going to poke it in really good and draw a nice circle. Okay, so double checking that. I know I'm not starting at zero because of the length of the the uh, ruler, 
makes it ungainly. So I'm just putting it on an even number. And 30 and let's go with the other markers. Okay. Let's deal with the, let's put it on 20 before. So 20. Yep. That looks pretty good. Okay. So I'm going to cut it out with my scissors. I'm going to do this as carefully as possible. I can make slight adjustments, but I really want to make this as accurate as possible. Anyways, you get the idea. I won't uh, bore you with having you watch me cut the whole thing out. I'll come back once it's cut out and it we'll is. go from there. It was a slow and tedious process. I wanted to purposely go slow because I didn't want to mess up. I wanted to get it as accurate as possible, although total accuracy is not really essential. I mean, there is some fudge factor, but that's okay. So. Let me, let's see just how well it fits the mirror size. So here we go. Move it. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Again, this is the back of the mirror, so I don't touch the front. We will have to put this eventually on the front of it, but for right now, this is just a test fitting. All right, so the center little hole here that was made by the beam compass, that's gonna be our guide hole for the very exact center. What I have here is I bought a wooden doll, one eighth, one -eighth inch, easy for you to say, a wooden doll that I'm going to use to make my mark and I need to put uh, make a hole that will be well this will slide through so I'm not sure so sure how a drill will go through cardboard but we'll find out put my cardboard on a scrap piece of wood and I have my drill with a quarter uh, actually that was a quarter inch uh, dowel not an eighth inch dowel so it's a quarter inch bit and I have my drill on the low speed and I'm going to go very carefully and see what we can do. Starting to pick up some wood. Let's see if it's through. I think it's through. Okay. Okay. Quarter inch. See if our dowel fits through there. Yes, it does. Yeah, tight, but let me see if I can go through from the other side a little bit. Well, Very tight, okay, very tight, but there you have it, okay. Now, the plan is, I'm going to put a little bit of paint on the end of this, stick it through the hole, and as I go down to the mirror, that should put a dab of paint right on the surface of the mirror. So. Truth. I have flipped the mirror over and it is now with the mirror side facing up. And this is the only time it's going to be that way until it gets into the telescope. So I'm going to put carefully 
put my template here and so it doesn't move I'm going to kind of tape it in about a few spots here probably about four spots make sure it's about it's about where it needs to go. Okay, centered, 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 all the way around. Like I said, this is not to the millimeter, but pretty darn close. And it should work out just fine when we go to collimate. And you see it fits pretty good. You know, the best I could with just a pair of scissors, although, I, again, I was very careful. See, I, we have our center hole. So what I did, I have some acrylic paint bought from Walmart in the art department, 98 cents. I chose red because that was traditional. I could have chosen another color, but... I guess red was traditional since the old one was red and I chose acrylic because after doing some research online uh, acrylic adheres to glass the best of all paints you don't want watercolor because the doing will then your your dot will be gone soon at the, at the first sign of dew so I'm gonna dab this in here So I have a nice, some nice, you know, we do the sides. I took a piece of, put it on a piece of scrap cardboard that I had after I cut the thing out. Moment of truth, very carefully. It's not going on there. Maybe I need more. Come on. There we go. It went down. I was just stuck on the sides of the cardboard. Okay. boys and girls. Well, it's there. I want to put some more in the middle. Free hand here. Oh geez, my hands shaking like crazy. There it is. There's the dot. It's a little bigger than I kind of like, but it should be. It should do just fine. It looks very circular, which is good. And we're going to let that dry as much as possible, a couple days. Then we'll mount it onto the back of the telescope. And we'll do a little bit of colonization. Hopefully, if the weather clears, and I got some dust in there, okay. Hopefully, in a couple of days, that will dry just nicely. So there you have it. We'll come back. We'll do another video of installing it in the telescope and doing a little columnization and maybe a little observing. Okay, we'll see. so there's our dot in the middle of our mirror. Now it's time to mount the mirror back on 
to the this right here, which goes onto the back of the telescope. <clears throat> so let's get started. Okay, here's our mount. What I've done without you, of course, uh, is I've drilled some holes in here and on the back too <clears throat> to try and lose some weight, try and make it a li little bit lighter. I only did a few holes, maybe got rid of maybe a pound or less of weight, but every little pound helps. So, first thing we're going to do is we're putting these on the pads. Okay, centering it up. And how they originally did this at Coulter, the uh, telescope was made by Coulter back in the 1980s. Coulter no longer exists, but a lot of their telescopes still survive. I don't know if there's a lot, but uh, it was held on pretty much by <clears throat> duct tape. So we're going to go around, believe it or not. Uh. <laughs> and I'm hoping that this duct tape is going to be good. Okay, carefully. Believe it or not, duct tape is the do all. Universal stick. Em. But that's not all. Okay. I'm going to go around twice. Don't worry, it's not just duct tape holding this. I'll get to that in a minute. But we'll do... Okay. That's two times around. Now, and this hose clamp, the big, you know what, hose clamp. And we got to slip it on. I think I opened it. Well, maybe I should open it a little bit more. Trying to get it this on without doing damage. There we go. That goes in the gap. You can pretty much see where the gap is between the mirror and the mount. And I want to kind of put that in between. Now this top board which the mirror is sitting on floats on the, the actual thing that goes in the telescope, the part that goes in the telescope. And there's adjustment screws, which I will show you eventually. All right, let's tighten that up.
Now, there's one more step uh, that I need to do, <coughs> and that was done at the factory, is that I need to put staples in the duct tape through the cloth onto the board. The reason for that is duct tape sticks to glass pretty good, but it does not stick to wood. So for extra, we're going to staple this all the way around. Because there were staples in this. When I took it apart, there were staples right in this. And I know why. Okay. Now, there it is. Back on the mount. That's probably the heaviest part of the whole thing. So, what I'm going to do, just to show you, okay, you have screws on the back, on the back. These screws with the washers lock it in place. They are actually into screw nuts on the other plate. The outside screws push against the bottom of the plate. They're the adjustments. So you have three, you can adjust it. You can push on one side and a little less on the other side. And it tilts the mirror back and forth in two dimensions so that you can get a direct alignment. So the next thing is to put it back into the telescope <clears throat> and see if we can get an alignment out of it. And then it'll be time for observing, hopefully. So let's do that. Okay, so here it is back in the back of the telescope. It's held on by three screws. I've already started one screw here. <clears throat> this is out on my front porch. Tighten this screw down a little bit. We'll rotate the telescope. <clears throat> I put a mark right here with a silver marker. I don't know if it makes any difference, but just to line up where it was before. Here's <clears throat> hole number two for screw number two. But it makes it easier to line up the existing holes that we're here to line them up because you don't want to make new holes if you don't have to. <clears throat> so get these screws in, very long screws. Okay, and one more screw in the bottom. It's got a few battle scars on it, but you know, it means that it was used. Hopefully, not abused, but I do have some red paint. I could re repaint it, but who's going to see the scars in the dark? So, <laughs> it's not a beauty contest <clears throat> as long as it's functional. tight because this is the tube is made out of cardboard and that's how they made them this is actually called sono tube 
it's a cardboard tube that they contractors use for concrete forms. Cheap way to make a telescope. So, oh, my cat's toy. <laughs> All right. Next thing is to get it up on the cradle and see if we can't get an alignment on this. Okay, now, if you watched my previous video on this, uh, you remember the secondary. Well, I've kind of mounted it back into the top here. This is where this guy lives. But I did not tighten down the um, bolt that it goes through. Now, this may be off in alignment, but we'll find out. Whoops. There we go. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. I think it's square, but if not, I can loosen it and adjust it. Now you can see my reflection down there. There's the mirror in the bottom of the telescope. All right, that should be tight. <coughs> so on to the next step. Okay, the tool we're going to use is this guy right here. It's called a Cheshire eyepiece. You can see it's got like a, a 45 degree mirror on one side. Whoops, down in there if it get a focus, which reflects light down in there. And you look down through this pinhole, and the idea is to put it in the Put it in here and you should have an alignment between let me loosen this Whoop. wow it's hard to do this one-handed the idea is to get I don't know if I can get the uh, there there you can Okay, I don't know if you can see down in there, but it's a line, everything concentric. See, it's a little bit off, and then adjust. So let's see what we can do. Okay, so I discovered that my secondary mirror was way out of alignment. So what I did is I had this little gadget here. Um, it's a laser collimator. I put it in the eyepiece. Uh, I'll take it out and show you. Uh, yeah, there's a laser at the end of it. You just stick it in there in the eyepiece and it should go straight down. And I don't know if you can see all the way down there. Uh, see the laser dot all the way down and it's in the middle of my red dot so let's see if we can put the Cheshire in there and see what that says because I couldn't see my red dot before here's the Cheshire whoops that's not supposed to slide down all the way it's supposed to be up a little bit Let's see what the... Okay, that shows that my... I don't know if you can see. That shows my red dot all the way over to one side. And that looks a little odd. See, now that everything is concentric, so I'd, I'm not sure if I trust the laser pointer the laser collimator. I don't know if you can see my red dot at about seven o'clock. It's hard to get centered right on here. And everything looks a little off. So, hmm, that doesn't look right. Let me see, let me do some investigating and come back and we'll see what we got. Well, I don't know if you can see it that well, but after much, much 
adjusting uh, you can see concentric rings and right in the middle you see the red dot if you can I'm not sure if you can or not but there it is and I have aligned the secondary mirror if I take this out oops, and I put this guy in let me turn on the laser is it on yes You can see that the laser dot goes right onto the dot in there. Well, I'm getting reflection. <laughs> That's really weird. But the laser is coming through the eyepiece, reflecting off the, sun, the uh, secondary, and going straight down to the primary mirror. And that laser dot is hitting directly onto the center dot of the mirror. So everything is lined up. But unfortunately, we have clouds, so there would be no observing tonight. As soon as there's a clear night, we'll get this out, and you can, you and I can give it first light. Okay, finally we're outside. Uh, first clear, well, semi-clear night in quite a while. Uh, it's still hazy up there, but we got the telescope out, and which is right here. I don't know if you can see it. And we've got something in the eyepiece that I want to show you. First test of the new mirror. I don't know if you can see it, probably not. Eh, it's very faint, but I did have it in there. It doesn't seem to show up now. Hold, maybe I can just take a picture of it. Well, anyways, uh, I'm showing you a photo because video just won't do, but that is the Andromeda Galaxy through the telescope onto my cell phone so um, the mirror recoding alignment and everything was a success okay bonus shot uh, the Orion Nebula it's very low in the sky in the uh, northeast but or the southeast excuse me in the southeast just coming up over the horizon but I thought I'd share yet another photo. Uh, this was taken handheld through the eyepiece of the telescope. So it is a little blurry because it, it's cold out here. <laughs> and I'm shaking a little bit. But So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I have more plans for more videos coming up. But... We'll see you in the, the next one. Please like it if you like it. And subscribe to my channel. Thanks.